It is one of the most iconic pictures in football. 1986 World Cup quarter-final, Argentina against England. The hand of God from Diego Maradona. Argentina going to win that game by two goals to one. Uh, let's get an English perspective on all of this, shall we? So we welcome Ian Dark to the show. Ian? I think it's very, very sad, the news today. And I'm, I must admit, I was quite moved when I heard that uh, Diego had died at a very young age of, of, of 60. I knew he'd been in hospital. Um, there were reports that he was on the mend, but obviously not. So I think he is certainly, isn't he, in the argument for the greatest player ever to pull on a shirt, mesmerizing skills. He was obviously a tormented genius, but, you know, that's an overused word, but he was a genius. OK, the hand of God goal uh, will always haunt England fans, but I know there's a different culture in South America where they just thought it's clever if you can get away with it. Uh, and it's part of it's part of football folklore. But if you really want to know about Diego Maradona and you're too young to have ever seen him play, just look at the tape of the other goal he scored yeah. in that match against England. I don't think that could be really topped as a World Cup goal. There have been a lot of special ones, but that there is right there at number one. Diego Maradona with the ball tied to his laces, running from his own half, shaking off goodness knows how many England defenders and finishing it off balance with the outside of his foot. Um, he was something else. You have the ridiculousness of that goal that, <laughs> that somehow, obviously, the referees and overlooked. Well that's the that's the, the issue for me it's not that you know maradona used his hand to score that goal after the the brilliant goal that he did score because show me a player that doesn't try to find an advantage or cheat or call it what you like in any league in the world and i'll show you a liar uh, the problem was the officials missed it and and so the goal stood but yeah most players try and seek an advantage. He did. If I'd been playing in that game, would I have been better about it? Yes. If I was a supporter of England, would I be better about it? Yes. But as a, a neutral looking in, these things go on, you know, probably 10, 12 times in every game. So it's, it's synonymous with that goal getting ahead of Peter Shelton. But really, it doesn't describe the man as a player. Uh, Gab, it's on pretty much the front page of most of the newspapers in the UK, uh, the hand of God. Uh, not many outside of England, though, had too much sympathy for the English. No, I mean, look, uh, apart from the obvious fact that, you know, you're reducing everything to, uh, to one incident. You know, Diego Armando Maradona was a man. He, had, he, he made many mistakes. He made many mistakes far worse than this um, and, and things that he can be criticised for. Uh, but I think, you know, a lot of people who make this point, they're, they're, they're kind of missing the, the central issue here, that in the eyes of many people, it really was the hand of God. He wasn't lying or, or being clever when he said it was the hand of God. It was the hand of God in the sense that, you know, for such a blatant handball to have been missed, there, was, there must have been some kind of divine influence there. Um, and then to go and see that second goal, the, the, the way Ian described it uh, beautifully there, you know, with, with, with the ball stuck to his laces uh, and, and the off-balance finish, that was also bordering on the supernatural. And I think it's relevant to, and this is why it resonated with so many people, it came against England. You know, it came a few years after the backdrop of, of, of the Falklands War, but beyond that, you know, it came against the country that, that invented the, the, the game. It came against the country that, you know, built the empire, the country that bossed the game, the country, the, the country that, you know, wouldn't play in the, in, in the first three World Cups because they thought it was beneath them. Uh, so there was a whole anti-establishment vibe, which I have to say Maradona, for his own purposes, you know, happily embraced and, and, and probably fomented as well. And, and I think that's why that resonates with so many people. And that's why people, you know, don't see it as some sort of massive travesty of justice. Um, they, look, they look beyond that. Uh, Ian, I, I just want to get your, just your personal memory. Just how good was he? The absolute best. Um, you couldn't really believe some of the things he did with a football. If you watch that documentary, which is essential viewing for anyone who loves the game and, and beyond, if you, if you watch that, you will see that defenders were trying to kick him all over the place when he was playing for Napoli in Serie A, yet he still delivered the title for them a, a, a couple of times. I think it was Gabo no better than me. And, and he, 
He's a messiah in that city. To this day, everywhere you go in Naples, you'll see pictures of Diego Maradona, badges of Diego Maradona, uh, T-shirts of Diego Maradona. Um, he is a, a god in that city. And of course, Argentina has gone into three days of, of mourning. He's right up there in the argument. And for many people, because he single-handedly won the World Cup, more or less, for Argentina in 1986, that probably places him above Lionel Messi. So you can argue about it, but there's no doubt about it. He was right up there in the argument for the number one player of all time. Ian Dark, thank you very much. Maradona being remembered around the world. The front page of the French newspaper Le Keep saying, God is dead. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.